We're making a big change on this channel. <laughs> I'm switching our microphones over to the new DJI Mic 2. I've been just incredibly impressed with them in the way that we've been using them for uh, the past couple of weeks. It's changed how we work. So I, I wanted you to know about it. It has made our recordings more resilient, like more resistant to uh, failures and errors, which means we're more efficient, which means we produce more videos and make more money. It has improved our sound. I'll walk you through what these microphones are, like the design and the features, and I'll test things like the audio quality and the range, and I'll make some comparisons to alternative mics like the Rode Wireless Pro or the original DJI mic that we had been using for a while. Uh, but first I wanna thank our sponsor, Adorama. And I wanna make a point, we're not sponsored by DJI. We're free to say whatever we want because we're sponsored by a store. It really makes no difference whether we recommend one mic over the other. And that means that when we say we love the DJI mic too, you can be like, those guys genuinely love the DJI mic too because we're always sincere about it. We use Adorama because Adorama is a store for creators by creators. They have an amazing supply of inventory in stock, quick and free shipping. They have real humans who can answer your questions and they have VIP points that earn you money every time you buy. I, I buy stuff, I collect VIP points and then I spend that on future purchases. Anytime you're buying photography, video, audio stuff, use our link here to pick it up from Adorama. That lets them know you heard about it through us and that helps unbiased reviews like this keep coming. As you watch this, notice that my mic on my lapel has fallen. I'm used to using a proper lav mic, which is a little lighter, and this is heavier than I'm used to, and as a result, it falls and kind of screws up the sound. That's not the mic's fault, that's my fault. First, I wanna cover some aspects of the design, starting with the case. You can see with the DJI Mic 2, DJI has switched to like a case in case design if you get the combo. So there's this sort of fabric vinyl, feels like it's waterproof case here. And then inside there's a second case. Before I get to this, I wanna show you all the other stuff that comes with the combo here. There, there are little pockets in here and everything opens up and is pretty accessible so you can see it right away. There's space for furries, which actually have more dark in them than my own hair does. These are also known as dead cats, but I am honestly uncomfortable with both furries and dead cats as terms. And you can see like I've lost a lot of dead cats attached to labs and I really like that it has a little plug in it that just snaps right on. So it definitely will not fly off. And I, I find it easier to use than the kind of twist on type. It just pops right into the microphone receiver there. Uh, the kit here that we have also includes lab mics that we will separately test. And you know, I'm wearing the original DJI mic right here right now. You can see it. The lab mic is a little more subtle. It's a little more professional. On the other hand, it's less convenient because you got to run a wire and stash the actual transmitter somewhere. Let's get inside this case here. You can see this is a charging case with a battery and it has room for the receiver and both of the transmitters here. And it sort of automatically pops on when you open it up and shows you exactly how much battery you have in them. The mics here, which I'll sometimes call the transmitters, have battery life for about six hours of continuous use. But if you pop it into the case and recharge it from the case, they say it'll go for about 18 hours. I've been using it for weeks now doing fairly long recordings and then just popping it in when we're done and I have never had to think about it. Um, when I keep this stored, I have it plugged into USB-C which tops up the battery case which in turn tops up everything inside of it. When I pull out the microphone receiver there, you can see stored inside the case are adapters for USB-C and lightning. This lets you connect it to computers or any USB-C device, Android phones, or to older iPhones that have this style lightning connector. And that means you can get a real wired connection through an analog cable to a traditional camera, to your smartphone, to your computer, just using the stuff stored inside your case here. And it's really convenient that it's all together because sometimes I just need to do a quick voiceover to the computer. I know where all that stuff is. I can't lose any of the parts. And for somebody who's like constantly on the go, filming and editing from different locations, that means a lot to me. Another connectivity option is the actual microphones themselves. The transmitters here can connect to your phone or computer via Bluetooth and act like a Bluetooth mic. So if you wanna do that, what you do is you hold this record button down for three seconds and then that green light turns to blue. And now that it's blue, I can hold down that linking button and connect to it from my phone. 
You don't actually have to connect this to anything because these will record all the audio internally. So I can just hook up a USB-C cable to my phone or my computer and pull the audio off and sync it to another source, which means if I don't feel like hooking the receiver up to a computer, I don't have to, so long as you're comfortable syncing the audio to something in post. Comparing this to the original DJI mic, the combo came with a bag and you would store your stuff in the bag and then the transmitter and receiver came in this case, which was actually like slightly smaller than the current case and had kind of a nice texture to it. I think I preferred the design of the older case. One key design difference is that the original DJI mics came with a separate cold shoe connector there and this entire cold shoe connector removed by sliding it out of the top and then the receiver didn't have a cold shoe on it. The cold shoe is permanently affixed to the receiver in the DJI Mic 2. So you still have the same connector at the back here, but this part does not come off. And I'm okay with that because I always found it really hard to get that connector on the original DJI Mic. It had this springy thing and it was a little too firm, so I don't really mind that change. If you compare this to the design of the Rode Wireless Pro, they it actually comes with two very similar things. This one is just filled with all the junk that you need. You can see you have your lav mics and various connectors and magnets and stuff in this other container. And then your electronics are stored in this charging case, which is also what you use to connect if you're updating the firmware or offloading files. And this charging case, well, it's not necessarily more compact, but it is a very different shape. Like it's taller and significantly fatter. When you open up the DJI case, you are automatically greeted with your battery levels. And when you open up the road case, well, you're just greeted with sort of uneven design and you have to actually pull out the receiver here and let it start up. And then when you also pull out your transmitters, you can see only then can you check the battery levels. So it's a little less convenient. It's not like the Rode is terrible. We used the previous generation of the Rode Wireless Go 2 for a long time. The Wireless Pro is an improvement on that, but there are a few ways that DJI really does improve on this. So let me pull this out and actually attach it to a camera. When the Rode mic is mounted, you can see the levels on the top of the camera like that. But when you're behind the camera, you can't see the levels at all. And when you're in front of the camera, you can't see the levels at all. With DJI, the levels are placed at the back so you can see them clearly. But I can also very easily flip this around. And now when I am in front of the camera, I can also monitor my own levels. That's a small design choice with massive implications. The fact that I can notice if my mic has dropped out or died when I'm filming myself like I am now, like I often am, that's gonna save some recordings. Like most of the time I don't have any audio problems, but one out of every 20 times I record something, something goes wrong. If you record enough, you're going to have some failures. So those of you who create thousands of videos like I do, that's gonna save your butt at some point. All of these have little transmitters, little microphones that you can clip directly to your shirt. I have the original DJI mic here and that gets you going really quickly. You can also connect a lavalier mic to it and hide this away and clip this to your shirt and it might give you a little bit better sound fidelity and it'll also let you hide the sort of heavily branded microphone away off camera. This is the DJI Mic 2 compared to the Mic 1. You can see I have a piece of tape on my Mic 1s to cover up the DJI branding. The Mic 2 is like semi-translucent, so you can kind of see through it and it's shiny. I actually prefer the design of the DJI Mic 1 receivers. They were a little more subtle. I don't like the way that this catches the light. I'll definitely end up uh, painting it or covering it with tape or something as soon as I finish this review, just for our ongoing use. The DJI transmitter mic is about half the size of the Rode. And that's just less on camera. It looks a little bit more professional, big win for the DJI. And for the record, you can turn off the lights from the transmitter, so you don't have to see that stuff on camera. All of these mics have little clips on the back that you can clip to your shirt, or the ability to go magnetic. You can see oh, this is actually pretty strong. This little magnet here snaps on and it is powerful enough you can clip it to a shirt. 
but not a sweater or a jacket, but still, especially with like a women's blouse, they often don't have a proper collar that I can attach to. So for Chelsea, that is really convenient. I will say a disadvantage of the road is when you do want to go magnetic, you have to pull out these separate two pieces here and they clip on the clip and then, and only then can you be magnetic. So it's nice that the DJI system is kind of built in and a little bit simpler. The microphone will also connect completely wirelessly to the DJI Pocket 3, and that means you can have a truly cordless experience. Let me talk a little bit about the user interface on the receiver. It has like a very bright, beautiful screen, and they've added an analog dial here. I can touch this and then adjust the levels up or down analog. But this is also a touchscreen. That's something that the Rode mic doesn't have. I can swipe down here and scroll through a variety of different settings. The Rode mic has configurable settings, but you have to manually manipulate it by pushing these different buttons and it, it gets the job done, but it's just not intuitive. Rode also has a Mac or PC app or phone app too, where you connect this with a cable and that does a pretty good job of allowing you to configure it. But this is nice because it's on the go and you can configure everything easily. I still strongly prefer the DJI because I can just configure it on the go when I'm on location and suddenly I need to change a setting. Can you believe that was just design? <laughs> Mics have gotten so complicated, but also convenient. All of these mics will record two separate channels simultaneously. Often Chelsea and I are both on camera. I would put one of these on each of us. One will be recorded to the camera as the left channel and the other to the right channel. And then when I'm editing it in Final Cut, I just separate them out as dual mono. That's how we'll always shoot. But you also have the option of using a safety channel where I think it's the left channel records your normal audio and the right channel is six decibels below. So it's a little quieter. That means if the person you're recording gets really excited and starts to yell, you can pull the right audio and it'll be quieter without clipping. There is an alternative safety measure that I'll be relying on, which is 32-bit float. This is something that the Rode Wireless Pro has also. What this does is record local audio files in both of the microphones, both of the transmitters that have much more dynamic range between silence and super loud noises. So basically, there's never going to be any clipping. And I probably won't use this on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll just record in through my camera like I am now. But when something goes too wrong, when I am too excited and I yell, I'll be able to pull that file and recover it without having any distortion. It's a good backup. The local copy can also save my butt if there's interference with the wireless connection, which I've, I've never had with the DJI mics or if my receiver dies, or if the cable between my receiver and my camera comes loose, or any number of things. I don't even need the receiver because I can just turn one of these on and connect them to somebody and then pull the audio later and sync it with my camera. It just gives me more options and more methods of producing a usable video even when things go terribly wrong. The range on all of these is ridiculous because how often do you record somebody that's not in the same room as you? They will record out to 250 meters, which is 820 feet. There's only one way to know for sure though, so let's go outside and test it. This is my backyard. I'm going over, over. mic check, mic check. This is much farther than I've ever recorded anybody. You wanted to be able to like surveil them from a distance or maybe you're like the feds and you're wiring somebody up. Okay, I can't, I can't go any farther without trespassing. For my first audio quality test, I'm gonna wear all the mics pointed at about the same angle and distance to my face in our studio here, which has acoustic dampening. And then I'll sync them all up. I'm not running this through the camera's amplifier because I want the sound to be purely from the mic. Let's go someplace noisier. This is our basement, which has really low ceilings and tends to pick up a lot of echo. And this should let me know how they do isolating the sound from my voice. This is our basement, which has really low ceilings and tends to pick up a lot of echo. And this should let me know how they do isolating the sound from my voice. This is our basement, which has really low ceilings and tends to pick up a lot of echo. And this should let me know how they do isolating 
the sound from my voice. Well, let's take a second and talk about my process here. I recorded the files internally using 32-bit audio for the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro because they support it. I then imported them into Final Cut and equalized the levels based on the peak sound from my voice. You can see the peak right there. Then I carefully went and measured the ambient levels from the sound from the faucet here. Back to me in the kitchen. And I'm gonna turn on the faucet. So I have some ambient sound. And I'm gonna turn on the faucet. So I have some ambient sound. And I'm gonna turn on the faucet. So I have some ambient sound. Scrubbing through, looking at the analyzer, we see some interesting data. The first DJI mic didn't have the dynamic range of either the Rode mic or the new DJI mic 2. That makes my voice sound a little bit tinny. The analyzer shows that it simply lacks both the bass and the treble. If we compare the DJI Mic 2 to the Rode, the Rode has more bass and you hear that. That might sound pleasant or it might sound a little muffled. They each seem to be pretty close in the higher range though. Analyzing the volume of the faucet in the background, the DJI Mic 1 lost with a level of negative 33.3 decibels. The Rode came in second with a level of negative 37.8 decibels and the DJI Mic 2 came in first. It registered the faucet at negative 42.6 decibels. Indeed, it did the best job of killing the ambient noise. And some echo in my kitchen here. And I want to hear how they isolate because, and I want to hear how they isolate because Supposedly the new DJI mics have some ability to use AI to cut down background noise. I don't care about that too much because they tend to do that in Final Cut, but if I were doing a live stream on my phone or something, that could be really convenient. I wanna do one last audio test. This is the DJI mic two attached directly, and now I'm gonna plug in the lav. And this is the DJI lav. So I'm wondering if they sound any different at all. In the comments down below, let me know what else you would like to know about this. Subscribe to our channel because we have lots of reviews and tutorials coming out for photographers, filmmakers, videographers, all types of creators. And don't forget, all of us should support other creators by shopping at this link at Adorama. Adorama can answer your questions. They have free shipping, the best inventory of everything we creators need. And maybe best of all, when you shop there, they often throw in free stuff and you get VIP points that you can spend later to buy extra stuff. Keep unbiased reviews like this coming. Support your fellow creators by shopping at sdp.io slash adorama anytime you're buying something. Before I go, I do have a little wish list for DJI. Like only I could complain about something brand new that I find absolutely amazing. Right now, I can record a safety track when I'm using one channel. but if I'm recording two channels and I want to keep them separate, I can't record a safety track and I can adjust this through the settings, but I would love it if it automatically switched between doing two separate channels or a single channel and a safety track, depending on the number of mics I had connected. So when I pull out two mics for both Chelsea and I record the two channels separately, when it's just me on camera, just record one channel and the safety channel, that could be a firmware update. DJI, I could use a little extra hand when I'm recording myself. It helps a lot that I can see the monitors on top of the camera. But if the audio drops out, be aggressive and let me know. Like, I want you to actually beep at me. It's like, beep, beep, we lost audio. Or if you're getting rustling from my shirt brushing against it, or sometimes Chelsea's longer hair will get in the microphone, or maybe the wind is hitting the microphone and making it uncomfortable. Maybe then give me just a blinking on the receiver so that I can see that something bad is happening. When you're recording yourself, you don't have a sound guy with headphones on who can say, whoa, whoa, hold on, we need to fix your mic. I need the microphone itself to do some of those sound guy type tasks for me. After recording, it would be great if I could use the screen on the receiver to kind of scrub through and have it highlight any sort of potentially bad events like if the wind hit the mic really loud let me just play it back and see if i need to record or if it was acceptable i would also really like this to be more subtle and attractive like i appreciate that you made it small but i would love it if it had skins or cases that could match my different outfit or that could be separately branded perhaps i can do some of this with painting and stickers but it would be nice if you had a plan where you could maybe a custom printed your brand's logo on there or even just get little gel skins in green, red, blue, white, black 
depending on the outfit that I'm wearing. So it just blends in a little bit better. That's it. Please subscribe. I appreciate your support. Bye.